Uh, thank you for inviting me to present our findings. Um, I have no conflicts of interest to declare. Immune activation is essential to mount an immune response to infection. However, um, T cell activation in particular, which is measured using a variety of T cell surface markers, most commonly CD38 and HLADR, is um, associated with a variety of poor outcomes in HIV, um, increased viral replication and cell death. And in most people living with HIV, the chronic immune activation is detected, and while it's reduced by ART, it's generally not reduced to the levels found in HIV uninfected people. In adults, high T cell activation is consistently associated with rapid progression, mortality, and poor response to ART. There are fewer longitudinal pediatric studies available, um, and some of those there are have included mostly older children or very wide age ranges, um, have assessed treated and untreated children together, which complicates the interpretation. And additionally, CD38, which is the most commonly used marker of T cell activation, is a problematic marker to use in studies that include infants, as it's also a marker of recent thymic emigration and is expressed on the surface of most um, infant lymphocytes. So despite all this, there is so there's data showing that activation is generally detrimental in pediatric cohorts, but there are some uh, contradictory data out there. And we asked the question of whether T cell activation was associated with disease severity and outcomes among early treated HIV infected infants. We used samples and data from the Optimizing Pediatric Heart Study, and the OPH was conducted in Nairobi, Kenya, and recruited between 2007 and 2010. ART-naive infants were uh, recruited soon after HIV diagnosis, started on ART, and followed for two years. For this study, we used the baseline blood draw to quantify T-cell activation and related the um, activated proportion, which is shown in the top right-hand quadrant here as the CD38 high and HLADR expressing proportion of the CD4 and the CD8 T cells separately. And we determined associations with disease severity at baseline and with longitudinal outcomes of so mortality and ART response. The first aim of the study was to quantify the amount of T cell activation present in the cohort and to identify baseline correlates. 75 infants had samples available and contributed data to these analyses. Their median age was four months. Uh, they were immunocompromised. Their median CD4 was 19%. And they had very high viral loads of a median of 6.6 .6 log. Over half were WHO disease stage three or four and were stunted or underweight. Of the 75 infants, 59 initiated ART, while 12 died before ART could be initiated, and four were lost to follow-up. <clears throat> Levels of T cell activation in the cohort were highly variable, and as expected, CD4 and CD8 T cell activation were correlated, as shown on the left. For the rest of the talk, I'll be focusing on CD8 T cell activation. The distribution of CD8 T cell activation was um, fairly variable and skewed. Um, the median level was 17% and the mean was 20%, which is comparable to what's been seen in pediatric HIV cohorts previously. But there were seven infants with activation less than 5%, which is comparable to what's been reported in HIV uninfected cohorts. There was no hint of an association between the levels of CD8 T cell activation at baseline and disease severity, so there was no association or no correlation with viral load or CD4 percent by Spearman's rank correlation and no difference in activation by WHO disease stage 1 and 2 versus 3 and 4. The second aim of the study was to quantify the association between T cell activation at baseline and subsequent mortality pre and post ART. To ask this question, we again used the baseline CD8 activation. Um, and there were 24 deaths in the cohort, 12 of them before ART could be initiated. And we used two thresholds to find a priori. The first was the median, with a hypothesis that greater than median activation would be associated with increased mortality. And the second threshold was 5%, with a hypothesis that less than 5% activation would be associated with decreased mortality. <clears throat> 
However, CD8 activation greater than the median was not associated with increased mortality in our cohort. And in fact, there was a trend toward an association with decreased mortality in this group after adjusting for WHO disease stage. However, when the cohort was examined further, there is no evidence of a dose response. On the contrary, this is entirely driven by the subgroup with activation less than 5%. And there's actually no difference between greater than median or less than median activation after removing this group. So when the threshold of 5% activation was used, infants with less than 5% activation were at threefold greater risk of mortality than those with greater activation after adjusting for WHO disease stage, and the results were comparable when adjusted for viral load or CD4%. When restricted to those infants who initiated ART, um, lower than 5% CD8 activation was associated with almost a five-fold risk of mortality. And the implications of this, um, the infants with CD8 activation less than 5%, they were, this was not an indication of a more contained immune response or a better contained infection as we had hypothesized. Five of the seven infants in this group died their median viral load was half a log higher than in the rest of the cohort, and five of the seven were at WHO disease stage three or four um, at entry into the cohort. And taken together, this suggests that this, may, this group may have had an inability to respond to HIV antigen, whether that was um, an inability to respond to HIV antigen at all, or whether these infants had previously had higher activation but by the time that they entered into the cohort, they, um, they had suffered immune exhaustion and irreversible damage to their systems. The final aim of the study was to quantify the association between T cell activation and ART response among those infants who initiated ART. And in this analysis, CD8 activation greater than median was associated with poorer CD4 recovery post ART with um, by a linear mixed effects model, with those infants with greater than median activation having a recovering CD4 at a rate of 0.8% per month compared to 1.7% per month among the infants with less activation. There was no difference in the 6 to 24 month period. And on the right, the infants in the cohort um, had poor viral suppression, only 80% of them ever suppressed to less than 1,000 copies per mil during two years of ART, and there was no association with CD8 activation at baseline with a hazard ratio of 0.95. The strengths of our study include the fact that this is a homogeneous infant population with a narrow age range, and activation was uniformly assessed before ART initiation. However, given the rapid and variable disease progression seen in infancy, um, there was still a, a fair amount of heterogeneity among the subjects in our study. We used both CD38 and HLADR to identify our activated T cells and included a variety of other T cell phenotypic markers in order to um, confirm internal consistency of the data. But we did not have an immune exhaustion marker in our panel and, unfortunately, no availability of T cell function data for these children. And because we have no longitudinal sampling available prior to diagnosis and initiation of ART, we are not able to test the hypothesis of whether these children had previously had higher levels of activation that had been lost by the time that they were identified. So in conclusion, CD8 T cell activation varied widely among infants in our study um, and did not appear to be driven by viral load or associated with disease severity. Infants with less than 5% CD8 activation were at high risk of mortality in our study. Um, infants in this category had very high viral loads and advanced disease. And taken together, this suggests that lack of immune activation in the presence of an active infection may indicate an inability of these infants to respond to their infection. And finally, CD8 T cell activation greater than median for the cohort was associated with CD4 reconstitution, but not with viral load suppression on ART, uh, showing that neither extreme in CD8 T cell activation um, was beneficial in these children. I'd like to thank the teams in Kenya and in the United States who helped make the study possible, all of our participants, and the NIH and PEPFAR for funding. Thank you.